I'm going to start with Photoshop Touch and I will finish with Photoshop Touch. So what I'm going to do at the moment is uh, get myself some room on my secondary screen and get going with it. Move my keyboard out of the way. I'll be interfacing with my iPad. So my iPad is in front of me and I'm going to show you Photoshop Touch. So going into Photoshop Touch. I have already linked this to Creative Cloud. All that's doing when it links to Creative Cloud is um, it has files in there. So what I'm going to show you is that there are some tutorials and uh, the tutorials are very, very good. Unfortunately, they're not video tutorials. Uh, they are step by step tutorials to talk you through various things. So. I'm not going to use those tutorials. I may touch upon one later, but they are actually very, very good. Right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to start here and I am going to Creative Cloud. So what I have are my two folders on Creative Cloud. I have my demo files and I have complete versions of my demo files. As you can see, you can use local files. You can also use the camera. You can search Google for images and you can bring in images from Facebook as well. So what I'm looking at doing is looking at these demo files and they are loading in. Right. So what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to show you, one of the things I'm always being asked with Photoshop for the desktop, so the full blown version of Photoshop is I've got this image and I want to remove the background. It's the Holy Grail. So what I'm going to do is do that, but I'm going to do it with Photoshop Touch on the iPad. So first thing I'm going to do. I am going to open up that image, which is called Gravestones. So what it's doing is it's downloading it. And when it's downloaded it, it will open it for me in the editor. Now, I will need another image. So there is the image that I have opened. I now need to add another image to that. But before I do, I'm going to just briefly take you around the interface. What you have here are your tools are down the left hand side. The equivalent of your menu is across the top and I'll be interacting with that as we go. And on the right hand side, which is exactly the same as the desktop version, you will have layers. So Photoshop Touch for iOS supports layers as well. So I have one layer on there at the moment. I need to go and get another layer. But I could choose to add a layer from down the bottom or I could choose the option at the top, which you've just seen me touch there. And what I want to do is add another image to the image I already have open. So I've chosen the one of the lady in the hat, so hat and dress. It's downloading that live from Creative Cloud and it should open that on top of my other image. So there we go. Now, what I've got here now, if you're used to, if you have any familiarity with the desktop version of any image editor, you will know that there is a command called transform. And that's really the mode I've gone into. I'm now able to transform this image with the lady with the hat. And what I can also do is zoom in and out. So I'm using two fingers. I'm pinching together to zoom out and pulling apart to zoom in. So that's what I've got there. Now, as it happens, that's not too bad where that lady is, but I'm going to move her to the right. So all I'm doing is tapping with my finger and just moving her over to the right hand side. So she looks as though she's sort of coming in. And then all I'm going to do is hit the blue tick at the bottom. That will take me out of transform mode and I'm now back in the editor. What I've got here so I'm going to just get that so full screen so you can see it, is I have two layers, the top layer being the lady. And if I tap on that target, I get an exclamation mark and she disappears. What I've done is I've hidden that top layer and I can also hide the background layer and then I've got nothing. So I tap to bring them back. There they are. Now, if I'm going to make it look like she was photographed in that graveyard, I've got big problems because there's a background behind her and it's quite dark. She's wearing a dark dress as well. She's got lovely wavy hair, a nightmare when it comes to making a selection. And the colours of the two images don't match either, but we'll do what we can. So what I need is a special tool that's only available in this version of Photoshop. And how I get to that is tapping on the white button and I'm going to go down here. I've had the magic wand tool, but I also have this one, which is now in white. And that is the scribble select tool. It's fabulous. 
What this allows me to do is tell Photoshop Touch what I want to keep and what I want to throw away. Now, how I do that, I will use my finger for this. The first thing I need to do is I have two options underneath that, that square on the left. I have keep and I have remove. And as I do that, I toggle between them. So I'm going to make sure that I'm on keep at the moment. And now what I want to do is just roughly tell it what I want to keep. So I'm going to draw there just roughly. You can see it's very, very rough. It should be appearing in green. And I'm doing that with my finger, not using a stylus yet at all. And just do that. So nearly there. Now I could be more precise. I can go back and I can add extra bits in, as you see. And I can just squiggle in the middle. Don't have to, but I can if I want. And then I'd look to be as, as precise as I want to take the time to be around the edge of that. The, the more time I take, the more accurate it will be, obviously but it doesn't actually have to be that accurate at all. Now, you'll notice that the hair, I've not really gone too close to the edge. That's as near as I'm going to get with that. So I've told it what I want to keep. Next thing to tell it, what I want it to lose. So I tap on remove, and now what I do is draw around the bits I want to lose. So I'm going to go back to that image, and I'm very roughly going around the outside of the lady, and this should be in red. So again, just using my finger, not very precise at all, just doing that there. And as soon as I do that, it starts processing it, and it makes a selection which you can see with the marching ants, so very similar to Photoshop. And it's actually done a pretty good job. Now, I do need to remove more. I need to get rid of the grey bit underneath her arm. So I can go back into that and I can just do that and that should take away the grey bit. So you can see there, that's not too bad. It's not quite right around her neck though. If you look on the right hand side, just above her shoulder near her collar, it, that's not quite right. So what I could do is I could go in there and say, no, I want to keep this bit, don't want to keep that bit. But I'd have to be very, very precise. And the other problem I've got is the hair on the other side. Just so we can see exactly how good and how bad this is, what I can do is I can actually go into this menu option. And this gives me options for the tool I have selected. And if you're used to, again, Photoshop on the desktop, you'll be familiar with the Refine Edge option. So I'm going to tap on Refine Edge. And what that does is it gives me this overlay. And that tells me how good and how bad that selection is. And it's not too bad, apart from around the hair and around the neck. But in Refine Edge, I can do just that. I can use the Refine Edge option to refine the edge. So the first thing I'm going to do is to fix the shoulder uh, area on the right. So what I'm doing is just drawing across that area. That's not very good. And as you can see, what happens is it starts making the selection for me and improving that selection. So that's still not 100% perfect there. I may have to make some changes elsewhere for that. But what I will do in here, I will do the hair. Now, if I can just zoom in to show you, you can see it's made a good selection of the hair, but I can see the background through the hair. So what I want to do with this refine edge tool is just go in here, draw over the bit that's not too good and take in even these little wispy bits of hair around here. And as I let go, it refines the edge. And as you can see, now I've got a much better selection. And obviously, the more time I take with this, the better. And I'm mindful of the fact I haven't got a lot of time. So I'm going to quickly do the best job that I can with it. So just going around the edges here. And then I will zoom out and sort out the top bit. So let's have a look around there. Yes, it needs a little bit more work at the top here. So where you see the red disappearing, that's where I'm drawing with my finger. And I could go around the feather a little bit, but the feather's not too bad. The feather's looking pretty good, actually. So what I'm going to do is accept that. And the only area that I think I've got a little bit of a problem with is that shoulder. So back when it's refined the edge, I'm going to go back to in here and I'm going to zoom in 
and I'm going to try and make that a little bit more precise over here by just drawing on it like that and hopefully that will improve that. Are you going to uh, let me do that? Are you thinking about it? Uh, it's thinking about it. Okay, let me come out of there. Right, I've got a rough selection. Okay, that's not too bad. What I'm actually concerned about more than the shoulder is the hair. The hair is what I need to be looking at. So I have a selection. And what I'm going to do now is actually extract the lady from the background. So remember, she's on the same layer. So what I'm going to do is go up here. And what I have here are the action commands for what is selected. And extract is an option. So I'm going to tap on there. And as you can see, that extracts her from the background. Then what I'm going to do is go back in here and deselect. So I now haven't got anything selected. And that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Of course, there is a slight problem, which I mentioned, which is the background image is very spooky and the, the foreground image has been shot in a studio. So it doesn't particularly match very well. But I can fix that. I can fix that by going into the special effects and going to the photo options. I have four options. I have basic, I have stylize, I have artistic and I have photo. And the one that works really well for images that are quite dark like this is the Sleepy Hollow one. So I tap on Sleepy Hollow and as you can see, it completely changes it. I can change the intensity. So right down from what she looked like when I started, I can move it up, move it up uh, until I'm happy that she actually looks like it was shot in that location. So very film noir. And that doesn't look too bad. That's well, about right I would say maybe a little bit too dark and just tap okay there and I have taken the first image which had a, a nasty background on it and I've merged her in so for compositing it's absolutely brilliant you don't have to be precise you don't really even have to know the intricacies of the tools to get that kind of effect on something as intricate as her hair was so just to move that down and show you the finished product you know, move down for me. No, not zoom in, move down. It's thinking about it. There we go. So you can see the whole image. So there is the image. Now, at this point, I'm going to use the option in the top left hand corner to go back. And it says, do you want to save the project? Now, I do have these two images on the Creative Cloud and now on my iPad. But what I haven't saved so far is the Photoshop version. So if I wanted to take this back to my desktop and carry on working with it, I could do that if I save the project. So I'm going to save the project and that's what it's doing now. It is saving the project. And it will then write that back and then that will go up to the Creative Cloud. In fact, it's actually uploading it. So there is a black bar at the bottom and it's filling with blue. What it's doing is uploading it to the Creative Cloud. So that one is uploading as we go.